Hi, I'm Marty Korn. Welcome to the first show of, the first official show of Conversations Over Cappuccino. Um, and uh, it's, this is a show that's very casual and we do have not cappuccino, but coffee. <laughs> and the first show is a, I think a superb show because we have Nomi, that's how you say it, yes? Noami. Noami, okay, who is that you see a very spunky lady, Halpern, who is most famed at the current time because she is not yet 102, 101, which everyone is impressed with except for one person, <laughs> Noami. <laughs> Is that correct? Well, it's not my doing. It's not your doing, no. God's not ready for me. <laughs> he wants you here. Right. <laughs> so, but that's so interesting, because I was asking Nomi what she would like to talk about, and what's most interesting to her, and I, of course, the age came up, and what's interesting to a lot of people is her age, and that's not most interesting to her. Is that correct? It's just things it's, that happen. I it mean, just it is. just happened to me. <laughs> I didn't plan it. You didn't plan it. No. Are you surprised? Well, a little bit. I think my mother planned it because she well, gave me only the most wholesome food she could find. Oh, uh, yes. She's very so persnickety. She was good good yes. to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Took yeah, good yeah. care of me. Yes. And you were born in, in Israel. In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Tell me about that. Tell me about your, how well, you got, you know, just the flow of your life, if you will. Um, my mother came to Israel, Palestine then, because her family was afraid she was going to marry the wrong man. Ah. So they shipped her off to her brother in Jerusalem. She came from where? From Yekaterinoslav ah. in Russia. Ah. Yeah. And so there, it was there that she met my father. I see. Who was teaching at Betzalel. Betzalel is the art school I see. in Israel. Which was a good thing for you, I suppose. Well, I didn't know it yet. <laughs> you didn't know it I wasn't time, born yet. It was eventually to be a eventually, good thing. Eventually, yes. So. so my father was an artist. And oh, your father was an artist? Yes. All ah. these paintings are his. Ah. Most of them. Ah. And metal worker as ah, well. Ah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, good. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, so he, they met there, yes. and it was a romance. Yes. And they got married within a year of her arrival. And among her gifts was a gazelle and two goats. Ah, that was her dowry? Wedding, or her wedding, wedding gift. Her wedding gift. Yeah, yeah. So no so, fancy... Uh, <laughs> No fancy, fancy anything. Things. It was Jerusalem. It was Jerusalem. Yes. It was a different time. Yes. And what year did they get married, do you know? What year? Yeah. 1913, I guess. 19th. I was born in 14. You were born in 14. Yeah. So. In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. And you spent, how, how, when did you leave? When did your family I guess leave? just before the World War. World War One. One. Yeah, most people, when they talk about leaving before World War, they talk about World War Two, but no. not no, 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 no. me. <laughs> yes. So that must have been 14, 15, 16. When did the war start? I don't know. 19, I, 1917, and I better right. be right about 16. That? So we left in 16. It be 17, didn't it? Yeah. I'm going to edit and that my, out. Yeah, my father left on a passport that said brown hair. What is it? What is it? Yeah. Dark eyes. He left on a phony passport. Okay. Yeah. He had blue eyes and blonde hair. Okay. And it said black eyes, brown hair. Uh -huh. And the man. Oh, so it was, a it was a phony passport. Yeah, because he would not have been permitted to leave because they were looking for men for the, oh, army. For the army. World War I, I was see. coming. Was coming, I see. Yeah. It was 19... So. Oh, this is going to bother me. And I may have to reshoot re this, but World War I. Anyway, it's the beginning of World War I. And your father, was, you said, was... Um, uh, your father was being uh, recruited for the Turkish well, all army. Well, all men. All, all men, men were being recruited. For the Turkish and army. And we thought it was a good time to leave. It probably was. Yes, he, still, he had an older brother in America, so... Yes. We knew where to go and what to do. Yes. 
And so we were kept in jail in Palestine to make sure we'd leave. And we left for Egypt. What do you Egypt mean to make, make sure you'd leave? To make sure that we'd leave the country. Why, why, did, why were you put in jail? Just to make sure that we were going to leave. And the same thing oh, happened you mean in, Egypt, go somewhere else? in Egypt. Wow. The same thing. We were imprisoned oh my God. until we would leave. Wow. And it's actually in jail that I took my first steps. So Is that true? I was a jailbird, a wow. very small jailbird. <laughs> a small jailbird. Yeah. Yes. And so from there we went oh, from Egypt to story, Italy, right? yes. up through Italy. Right. through the tip of Spain into wow. France to England, uh, where we got the boat uh, to America. Uh, yeah. Did you think about, well, I guess you wanted to get out of Europe at that point. I wasn't thinking. I, I guess was you a were. baby. You, <laughs> you probably were. Though. <laughs> no, I was just interested yes, in but where is my next bottle. Did they bottle? think they just wanted to get to the out, America? Out, out, out. Out of the out, area. Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And my mother warmed the milk from my bottle under her skirt on a primus. You know what a primus no, is? No, I don't. It's a little stove with a candle. Ah. So that's what she did under her very long skirt. Ah. And, ah. Yeah. I see. And so uh, she didn't go up in flame, but I had my bottle of milk. <laughs> that's good. That's and good. And we got to the States. Yeah. And it, then I had uh, some, an uncle and an aunt and we lived in Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn, Jersey City, Newark. Because? Why were you, were you making a tour? Well, <laughs> my, my father had to make a living, so I guess right. that's how... And he made a living as an artist, or did he... No, probably not. He tried, tried house painting. For, it lasted oh. one day. Oh. <laughs> He didn't like that. No, he got dizzy on the ladder. Oh, I see. So that was out. So anyway, so, so he, he he had to manage. He, made, he had to manage. He okay, now to... let's get to your kind of development. So my development was, I began to dance. I think in my early teens, and uh, one day a woman came by my dressing room. Right. And she said, "Someday." She said, what are you doing here? You should be studying with Fokine. And to say that was like saying, why don't you drop in at the White House for tea? Oh, really? I mean, Fokine, the West. great ballet master. Ah. And so it turned out that I really did end up at Fokine's. How did you get there? Well, there was a, an article in the paper that he was accepting new students, mm -hmm. and they would have to dance for him, and he would judge whether they're able to, whether they had any talent at all. Yes. And so when I got there, he said to me, what kind of a dancer are you? I was 12. <laughs> right. I said, I'm an oriental dancer. Uh. He said, really? All right, will you dance for me? So he sat down at the piano. Now, this is not just an ordinary right. person. This is, a, a... This is Michel Fokine of yes. the Russian ballet. Uh -huh. And he played me Anitra's dance. You know, from Pierre no, Gint? Ah, okay, I know Pierre Gint. Yes, All right, so he played me that. It's really not Oriental. It's right. in three-quarter time. Right. Right. But I improvised, and he laughed a little. He said, all right, you're, you're okay. It. You're all right. That's delightful. Yes, and so I studied with Fokine and studied with many modern dancers in New York. And then many dancers came from other countries, Spain, India, with their groups, and I thought, why not from my country? Why not represent the people I come from? Yes. And so I worked on a, reper on a repertoire of biblical dances, which I presented at the New York Times Hall. At the New York Times Hall? No, first 92nd Street Y. Why? I won the yes. auditions oh, nice. and then at the New York Times Hall. That was, a, that, was that, was a, that was a performance hall, New York yes, Times Hall? Yes, it's still, it still functioning, ah, yes. Okay. 41st Street, okay. next to Sardi's, ah, there's a theater. Okay. That's it. And it went on from there. Yes, yes. And what? tell me about your career. What, what happened with it? And well, what happened was I was invited, this is after touring America, Canada, Mexico, Cuba, etc., I was invited to come to Israel to make a movie. Yes. 
By the time I got to Israel, the company didn't exist anymore. Now, but, uh, let me, you yes. went back to Israel. Yeah, to, to make, make a, a movie. movie. About? I didn't know what it was going to be about. It was just a movie. Someone asked And they you, needed a dancer. Oh, they needed yeah. a dancer for the movie. Okay, I see. And so I went, and uh, by the time I got there, the mu the movie company had dissolved into nothing. I see, okay. And so instead, <laughs> I, uh, I danced for uh, one of the companies there, the Ohel Company, mm -hmm. and planned to make a uh, premiere uh, appearance in Tel Aviv. Yes. And that was the beginning of my career in Israel. I see. So you had career, dance careers, both in Israel and um, in the United States. Well, just the start of a career. I see. And then there was a man who sang very well in one of the local theaters. So with him, we planned a program of song and dance and something we did together. Right. Now we have a wonderful, oh, here. Well, that's a flower vendor. I don't know if you can, if not, if you can't zoom in, can, can you zoom in? Tilt it down, okay. Does that look good? Well, okay. it's based on a girl I actually uh, I saw. Ah. A little girl walking with her brother. She played the symbols. Right. Finger symbols. Right, even if it's... And they went to all the cafes in Tel Aviv dancing. Right. And people gave them coins. I see. So that's, so that's the origin okay. of this dance. Oh, and here, that's gorgeous. Well, that's, that's a it. Yemenite dance. Ah. How but, old were you then? Oh, in my 20s. In your 20s. I was, I was a grown up then. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So you yes. did a lot of ethnic styles. That's exactly back then. what is I it, did. Is this showing well? I tilt it down. Okay. That's the street dancer with the finger symbols. Yes. Yeah. There's his other dancer. Yes. Oh. Now, now these are... These, this is now a biblical dance. This is you. Yes, that's me. These are all you. It's all me. <laughs> yes. That's a Yemenite. If you, uh, tilt it down, you could say. Tilt it. <laughs> Better? Yeah. Down more. Okay. The prop has nothing to do with the dance. It just happened to be in the studio, but... They thought it would be a good okay. prop. Oh my God! This is these are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful pictures. That's Rebecca at the well. I see. So just tell me more, and I'll just flip through these, and maybe as well, they come up, just uh, just tell um, me more about what you did in your career. And well, the idea was to present dances of the Bible, mm -hmm. yes, and of the surrounding countries yes. because you have. A Persian dance there. When I was in Paris, I'll, I I'll take pictures and we'll put them up okay. as, we, as we as we go. So let's right. not worry whether yeah. we get. Oh, this is fascinating. Well, that's a company I oh, had show this. This in Boston. Wonderful. Boston had no modern dance company, so so this I, was your company. It, that was my company. So you did modern dance. modern as well as what, what would you. What would you characterize your dance forms well, as? Based on biblical themes, I guess. Uh huh. And modern Israel. And modern, I see. I yeah. See. So okay, so just go back to where your career is going. I know it's. Uh... Well, a great help in the starting the biblical dance was my husband, who was a rabbi. I see. And so. Now you were with him for suggest... forty years. Is that forty correct? years? Oh, yes. Time. Yeah. This was in Long Island, in I Rockville see. Center. Mm -hmm. And um, so he helped me do my research on biblical dance. Yes. And the result was the concert that I gave at the New York Times Hall. Oh, I see. That was see. my debut concert. And you did a lot of dances at synagogues, I understand. That came later. The idea of bringing dance back to religion, ah. which used to be a great part of it. And so I would dance in various synagogues throughout the country. When you say used to be a great part of it, can you talk about in that? Ancient times, in ancient times, there were yeah. dances, yes. songs and dances included in service. Yes. And so I tried to restore that. 
and I danced in various synagogues throughout the country, Canada, yes. Mexico, yes. Cuba. Uh -huh. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you were in the Zigfried Zigfield oh, that's, Follies. I that understand. preceded this. That preceded I was in a modern that. dance group mm -hmm. with Sarah Mildred Strauss. I see. And uh, we auditioned, and they took us into the Zigfeld Follies. Oh, I see. The first time they had modern dance. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we were there, I guess, three months when we noticed that all the chorus girls are in the wings watching very intently, so we surmised that the uh, company was probably going to go on tour and we would oh. be eliminated. Oh. And so they were trying to uh, learn. learn our routine. Oh, so see. we improvised every night. <laughs> we did a different dance oh, every delightful. night. And delightful. that was the end of that tour. That was delightful. But uh, my own dance really came a little later when I began to study the Bible and looked for material right. for my concert. Right, right. And my husband helped me with yes, that. Yeah. Yes. So I had Miriam and Deborah and various other people. Yes. And tell me about uh, well tell me about being your age. That's all my age interesting to people, maybe not to you, but it's to Well people. I don't find it you know you don't really is think not about bad. It. One day adds up to another day and another day and, and it just on. and there you are at a hundred and one. It just kind of happens, huh? It just happens. Yeah, but your energy is good and you're. I'm fine. And you're happy. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you teach a Yiddish class, I and understand. And I teach it at the local congregation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's every Wednesday. Yeah. And that's a lot of fun. Is it a lot of fun? Yeah. Delightful. A lovely group of people. Yeah. And they are yeah. there every Wednesday. Yeah, they yes. are. Rain, sunshine, sunshine, really? snow, really? blizzard, they're there. That's delightful. They're, they're there. That's delightful. Yeah. 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 And so, um, I don't know, what else should I ask you about? What should you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I live alone with my cat. Yes. And we're a happy couple. You are a happy couple. Yes. Yes. And I have good friends who mm -hmm. drop in. Yes. For tea. Yes. And other things. And your life is just enjoyable as it is. Yes, very yeah. pleasant. And your energy And I love is living good. in Woodstock. Oh yeah, tell me about your transition to Woodstock. Well, we've about... been coming here for uh, since the 30s, since uh -huh. I got married. Why what Drew well, you to what drew us? We looked for some place to go, summertime, mm -hmm. and my husband's brother rented this house. Oh, this house here. So we were familiar mm -hmm. with the house. I see. And then uh, we rented for a few years, and then I came to speak to uh, the woman who owned the house at the time. I can't think of her name because. Uh, she was running a series of lectures and I wanted to invite Pearl Buck. I see. Later I worked with Pearl Buck, that's another story. Mm -hmm. But uh, in talking to her, she said, you know, this house is for sale now. Ah. And so we took advantage well, and... It, but, but just go back, zip yes. back a little bit, because I was thinking about something else. But yes. you said you met Pearl Buck. Yes, that, well, she ran a uh, bureau of speakers and, and performers. In this area? In Philadelphia. Oh, in Philadelphia. Yes. I see. And so uh, she invited me to join her crew. Okay. And I was one of her artists. Oh, very nice. Yes. Very nice. So that was a pleasant What was she like? Association. Very pleasant woman. Was she? Yes, yes. Interesting? Good to work with. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Simple. Direct, yes. Sense of humor, yes. Yeah, lovely person. So you officially moved to Woodstock when? Um, at first we rented just for the summer. Yes. And then finally, uh, we bought a house. I this see. house. I see. And tell me, what does Woodstock mean to you? Well, it means that I can live my life in any way I please. Right. Because nobody cares, and I don't care how my neighbor lives either. That's nice. So it's a sense of freedom and, the community, and comfort. And the community? 
Lots of interesting people, yeah, lovely people. Fascinating, yeah. yeah. And yeah. many people with the same interests. Yes. So I'm a member of Edie Lefevre's drama group. Oh, really? That's one. On Wednesdays, I teach Yiddish at the And what, teach. what do you do in the drama group? Oh, mime. Ah. Pantomime, acting. And you're still doing that? It's up to us to pick whatever we want. Yes, yes. Can you can you do something here? No. Oh, why not? No, because <laughs> there's no need. I need a stage. Oh, here's a stage. You have a camera. You have a not stage. Really, you not can... really. Not really. Not <laughs> really. No. Okay. So that takes a little preparation. That takes, yes. yeah. But you still like to... And you were dancing until when? Oh, golly. I guess till about... 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you were in your 80s? 80s. 80s. Yeah, yeah. And what made Just you decide sure. to stop? Well, I decided... It was time. It, it, it was time. <laughs> One knows that it's time. There yeah. wasn't an event or something or just... Nothing dramatic, nothing sensational. Oh. No, no. no. I just decided that was it. Enough is enough. Well, it's not enough, but there's time to stop. Do you, do you miss it? Not really. Not really. Not really. Not now. Yeah. I did it at the beginning. Yeah. Not yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Life is full enough now. It is full. <laughs> and how do you spend your days? My days? Reading, embroidering, crocheting, yes. playing with my cat. Yes. Or teaching Yiddish yes. at the synagogue. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. So. Okay. Any thoughts? I'm gonna just come out. Any thoughts of things, other things we should talk about? Well, I guess. Uh, Actually, that's Linda Diamond, who's a choreographer here, who's in the background. What? Actually, this may be a good time for us to break. Do you want to come out here for a little bit? Okay. And then chill, that's a good idea, because <laughs> I, I like the idea okay. of exchanging, because she has other points of view, and I'll go behind the camera, and we'll see right. how that works, because I'm running out of questions, which, okay. is, which I shouldn't be, but... <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so, is it all right if I talk about a little bit of dance, behind the scenes questions? Of course. Uh, yeah. I, I, so, Nomi, I, I know you had a company of your own in addition to doing solo work in, in uh, over internationally, but uh, you were saying uh, something about the company in Boston. I wanted well, to know when, about that. Uh, I realized that there was not a dance company in Boston. Can really? you imagine? In New York, there were so many companies. And when I looked around, there wasn't one. So I decided mm -hmm. I must have one. Mm -hmm. And so I had an article in the paper, and I went to various dance schools, and I got me a group of eight dancers, and we began to work on the things that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. This is using biblical source material, mm -hmm. and uh, we finally had a con concert at MIT. Oh, how wonderful. Yes. Were these young adults or young teenagers? Young people. In their mm -hmm. early 20s, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that's where we danced at MIT. Oh, that must have yeah. been exciting. Yes. I, I was wondering about the behind the scenes aspect because it recently came to me uh, through a question someone had who is not necessarily in the performing arts but who does painting. And I said, you know, at least you, you can work, you know, you don't have to have a crew there. And, and she said, oh, it must be very difficult because all those personalities. And I said, no, it's the reverse. These wonderful dancers, uh, to me, are remarkable because I consider them traveling psychologists because they take, they accept and take so much of each personality of each choreographer is very different. So what is your experience when you think back to how they interacted with you? Or did you have to be a psychologist and understand Not that? Not really. You just have to know what you want of the group. Yes. and know what's impossible to get from a group. Oh, right, technically. So, I mean. Technically, yeah. and so you have to know what each person can do. Bring to the table. That's so right. Stage, to the stage. And so uh, when you choreograph, you have to bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when you have men in the group, that's altogether different, too. There's another approach 
to yes. having men, yes. How, how would you describe that? That's a good Well, good they point. move differently. They respond differently mm -hmm. to music, depending on the men. It's also mm -hmm. an individual thing. Mm -hmm. So I had a group of eight women and two men, mm -hmm. and they filled the roles. So I built the dance on the company. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. And I know that you told me you loved designing the costumes, but did you have someone sew them? Or? My mother did the costumes. Oh, she was there in Boston? She ca she came really? up, yes. From Only where? for part of them. Where I lived she... in Swampscott, Marblehead. Uh -huh. Where did it's she It's on live? the coast, in New York. Oh, she was in New York. Yeah. So she actually so sewed? She, a par the... Only part of them, because oh. then I began to take over. It was mm -hmm. too much yeah. for her. And I did them. I did oh, the costumes. Wonderful. So yeah. you must have been very And I also had a woman in the group, now that I think of it, mm -hmm. who could sew. Oh, really? Oh, so I funny. would base things, to pin them together, and she mm -hmm. would sew them. Oh, hell yeah. 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 So, so it's, it's yeah. really cool. And that's when I began to take the dance into the synagogue for religious services. Mm -hmm. And we danced at very many of the synagogues of Boston. We moved to Canada. We were in Toronto. With the group, that's, that's, with the group oh, doing so the too, Sabbath yeah. service. Oh, how wonderful! Yeah, I love Toronto because that synagogue was so long, so long an aisle to walk up, so we could oh, do all wonderful. our dancing While as we moved up. to the pulpit. Oh, that must have been On the way, incredible. yes. And in a way, that's kind of like what the Living Theater, a little before my time, did, where they would come into the audience from the back, and then it's like bringing in everybody into the event so they yes. become participants yes. because it, it sort of yes. takes them by surprise. And then I would pass things, maybe bells, down oh, really? the down oh, in the synagogue, oh. and they would ring. They would play? Play, yes, profession. with the music. Oh, yes, that's but, an exciting yes. thing. What a great so idea. So let the uh, people participate, really, yeah. in the service. And that's yeah. kind of like the ritualistic thing, that when you think of uh, music and dance of many different was well, part cultures, of religious observance. Everybody was involved. Even that's if they right. had people dancing, they also had people playing instruments in an that's impromptu right. way. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure it must have been And then I would good. deliver, the, I forgot that, I would deliver the sermon. Oh, really? Yes, about why include dance in the services. Oh, how beautiful. Yes. As a matter of fact, that's how it started. Mm -hmm. In Toronto, I, when I danced there, they asked me to address the congregation, and I said, I would like to have a dance service in the synagogue. And so the rabbi stood up and said, why not try it here? Oh, and that's, that's how that's it great. began. Yes. That's really exciting. Yeah. And I'm sure it was very meaningful for the people who were there. Well, the yes, yes, because, because other congregations way. wrote to us, "Will I come? Oh, Will really? I come to Philadelphia? Wow. Will I come to Albany?" So it traveled. Yes. The word yes. traveled quickly, yes. just by word of mouth. Yes. Did you ever have to apply for grants like the necessary evil of our no, day? No, <laughs> never you didn't did do that. You just did bookings and traveling yes. around. And well, once you start and a manager sees you, mm -hmm. he sort of takes over and mm -hmm. plans everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I know you had been to Cuba, and uh, today people are very interested because the borders are finally opening up again yes. with the United States and Cuba. So uh, at that time, though, it was uh, still they were kind of surveying anybody coming in that might be a spy. Oh, they Tell looked through my story. luggage very I mean, carefully, yeah. and I had a dagger there because my dance of Deborah had a dagger. Oh. <laughs> and so he looked at my costumes, he looked at the dagger, and he says, any more arms? Do you have any more arms? But anyhow, and that, well, it's very was very difficult because of the weather. Mm -hmm. They had a one-hour intermission so wow. people could go out and refresh themselves. Oh, because it was too drink hot. Drink some iced tea. <laughs> yes. And they didn't have air conditioning probably. Yeah. No. Yeah. And so, yeah. I came for just one concert, and they kept me for two months. Really? And wow. repeated, yes. In and different locations? Different locations, So yeah. you traveled around? A little bit, yeah. Did the Could, government pay for it? No, or no, it was no. A private it was tour? the Jewish community. Oh, how yes, wonderful. Yes, completely. Uh -huh. I remember walking through the street in Cuba, and it was hot. And so I'd go from one tree, the shade of one tree, to the shade of another tree, and zigzag up the street. <laughs> <laughs> really dre Escaping. dreadfully, uh, people don't go out 
at the noon middle of time. The day. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's true. I know. Yeah, Latin but that America's was a like great that. trip, a great adventure. What a wonderful yes. experience. Yeah. So they so, did they have newspaper articles in Spanish about? Oh them yes, first? yes, I have them all. Oh wonderful. yes. Did you speak Spanish at the time? No, no, no. I still don't. Oh. <laughs> but I know that you speak yes. French. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the uh, your experience in France with the uh, UNESCO, well, or the wasn't there something related to the uh, no, something de la danse internationale. Oh, Chive de la danse. Oh, right. Well, that's that was their big dance school, mm -hmm. and uh, the only thing I can tell you about that is that I danced there, mm -hmm. and uh, also at La Bessie, which was really a review theater, mm -hmm. and. Uh, auditioned. Somebody knew I was about to leave, so they arranged an audition so I would have to stay really? in Paris. Oh, how and wonderful. I won the audition and I danced there, oh. yes. And that was kind of unusual to have an Israeli dancer in a French mm -hmm. review theater, uh -huh. <laughs> but there I was. <laughs> With your fingers on Yes, <laughs> yes. That's neat. So, they love yeah. uh, what they call exoticism, exotism. That they do. So that you were do. probably uh, exactly one more yeah. exotic dish. Another exotic bird came yes. across the stage. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's neat. Yeah. So did you enjoy uh, being in France? What? How oh, did uh, they respond to you? Because they love artists. I mean, they, that they that they do, and I, it was an unusual thing to see my kind of dance mm. at a review theater, yeah. where ordinarily it would just be a little girl kicking or something right, like that. Wearing feathers yes. and yeah. a few rhinestones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fantastic so, to be able to combine that. Yeah, the star at the time was Charles Trenet. He was the oh, love... I remember that name. Do you? Yes, so he was a singer and he was very abused somehow that by the very same idea that I would be dancing at a French oh, review. Uh -huh. Oh, he, he but, didn't like the idea? Yes. So... And also, they had one institution, the uh, Archive de la Danse, where it was a small concert theater. And I, when I danced there, people uh, came who had never seen anything from Israel mm -hmm. on Jewish themes. Mm -hmm. And then I got invited to La Bessie. Oh, how wonderful. So, so they That's, were welcoming, it sounds oh, like. Oh, yes. They, they really, Love, they're lovely. very open-minded to a lot well, of Well, yes, and I was a, sort of a curiosity. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. they'd never seen anything like it. That's fantastic. So uh, did you learn the language, or did you already know it? Oh, I knew day? French. Mm -hmm. But then the war was coming, and I which had Which war was this? <laughs> which war? The 36 war? Was oh. it 36? Don't ask me about oh, dates. World War Two. Probably. Yeah, the last right. war. Oh, yeah, World yeah. War. Was it forty? Was it thirty? By me, it's all the same. Um, we knew the war was coming, and I was supposed to go on to another theater. The Bobby No had already oh, yeah, engaged me, so I had to cancel that and book really? to depart. Oh. Yeah, and in the hotel, they brought up buckets of coal uh, ashes to extinguish any fire that there might wow. be during the war. Oh, wow. So they were preparing the for real? war, oh. and it was time to come back to the States. Well, I think that um, a person's life is truly a statement on so many things. And I mean, um, I think Nomi reflects a, a fantastic journey of many different experiences, and it it also uh, sort of built your character, and I think you have a, a wonderful, magnanimous, uh, open attitude to people and to situations, and it's very endearing to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how well. I, I hope you're right. That's how I feel. <laughs> I, I, hope I don't you're know if right. you'll agree, but I, yeah, I think your yeah. whole uh, journey has been well. Such you know, there a, have been there were aspects of my trip in Europe which were not so pleasant. I'm sure. When we had the opening concert in Warsaw, we locked all the doors really? so we wouldn't be attacked just like with and my today. my posters were torn off the walls really? we'd see them in the street oh, oh we walked across. yeah and we wow. we'd let the audience when i toured we'd let the audience out in twos not Two to attract two. attention oh, yes wow. 
the atmosphere oh, wow. was not friendly at imagine. all. Yeah. Yes. And one time there was a parade of kids. They looked like little Nazis already. Really? Yeah. Oh, so there was horrible. already this tension yeah. in the air. Yeah, that undercurrent. Predating what, what, what came, came later. later. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So That's I had funny. a little taste of that. Yeah, you were on location yeah. to really see that. Yeah. It must have been something that stayed with you for a long time. I mean, because I'm sure you, when you left, you must have been relieved that you got out of there Well, safely. we were happy to see the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And the times we're living in now are not much different in a way. Well, I time. don't know where I would tour now. Mm -hmm. France doesn't look so yeah. quiet right I now. Know. And, you know, and unfortunately, there's a lot of anti-Americanism in different countries. Yeah, through revived. no fault of the individuals, but <clears throat> yeah. you know, well, what's been going on. So there's almost like a repeat of history in different forms. It seems to be occurring yeah, right there's now. There's no end. I just want to say that it's always a new experience for me to talk to you, Nomi, and I, I see different layers of your uh, experience and your uh, wonderful outlook and I, I feel very honored to know you and to get to know you even better each time. So this has been really a lot of fun. Well, it's been my pleasure. Okay, now let me do my conclusion. Okay, I, I don't know how this is change going to change chairs. We're going to <laughs> change. Monsieur. Have, have some cold coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's still a little warm. So anyway, it has been an absolute delight to talk to you. Thank and this you. is the first show. Now, Hopefully, uh, you know, it's all on you. If this is a good show, my career okay. goes if on. Not, if, if not, if uh, not, come again. <laughs> I'll come again. I'll come do another again. show. We'll try again. But it really has been delightful. And I okay. think that's, Nomi, you've had so many experiences. And um, it's just your spirit that's just through, that's through this uh, that's just really amazing and, and I well, think very inspiring. Me, you may not find it inspiring, but it's inspiring. For well, me, every day people. is inspiring because yeah. you never know. And I think that's delightful. What a, what a delightful... Well, it's delightful been a pleasure episode. having you. It's been a pleasure being here. It Come really again. has. I, I probably will. Okay. <laughs> Especially if the show messes up, which there may be excludes the glitches and things. This is kind of all patched together. You're welcome, anyhow. But that's what we're doing here with the uh, show. So if there are glitches, please, uh, you know, be tolerant. Glitch with us. So, yeah, with... Yeah, it's a show, actually, and that's what the show is about. It's a show about people in life and uh, kind of as we are, if you will. Um, and there's lots of, as you know, we talked about all the positive parts of your journeys and some of the negatives, but there's lots of ups and downs and rounds and rounds in life. And, that's and what really, it's all and about. That's, <laughs> and that's a perfect way to end. So thank you for watching, uh, if you're watching, Conversations of a Cappuccino. This is Marty Korn, host uh, with Noemi Halpern of Woodstock, New York. And cheers to you. Have some cold coffee. <laughs> okay, delightful.